Hey, this is the video lesson for the Inquiry Lab on writing expressions. And what you're going to learn today is a strategy called drawing bar diagrams to help you understand expressions. So we're going to start you off with three investigations and show you how to draw some bar diagrams. So let's start with this problem at the top. It says, Kevin has six more baseball cards than Elian. So I'm going to highlight that there. He has six more than Elian. Write an algebraic expression to represent the number of baseball cards Kevin has. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off by writing down what we know and what we don't know. And this is important when you're writing um, expressions. So here's what we know. We know that Kevin, oh, let me get a color you can actually see there. We know Kevin has six more cards than Elian. And here's what we don't know. We don't know the number of cards that um, Elian has. So we don't know how many Elian has. So whenever you're doing an expression, you always want to start by drawing a bar diagram in step one. And you start with what you don't know. So in step one, it says Elian has an unknown number of baseball cards C. Use a bar diagram to show Elian's cards. So I'm going to draw a bar, and I'm going to label it C. And remember, C is Elian's cards. Now, here's what we do know. Kevin has six more baseball cards than Elian. So if this bar here represents the cards that Elian has, and Kevin has six more, I kind of add on six more to the end of the bar there. So what this bar represents is that it's the Elian's cards with six more added on will get you Kevin's cards. So that means if we fill in the little box here, Kevin has C plus six cards. And that's our expression. Now down here it says how many terms are in the expression. Remember terms are separated by addition or subtraction signs. So we have two terms. And does the expression represent a sum difference product or quotient? It's a sum because it's addition. All right, so this expression here shows C plus 6, or that bar diagram shows C plus 6. On to the next page. Um, this says, we'll start reading Investigation 2 at the top, Sam sent 10 fewer messages in July than in August. Write an algebraic expression to represent the number of text messages Sam sent in July. Well, first off, why can't we solve that? What don't we know? Well, we don't know how many messages Sam sent in August. So in step one, it says Sam sent an unknown number of messages M in August. So we start with a bar, just like we did in investigation one. And this time we'll use M, cursive M, for the messages he sent in August. Now, here's what we do know. Sam sent 10 fewer messages in July than in August. So to show that we had 10 fewer, what we do is we drop 10 down below. That represents that you're taking 10 away. And that's going to help us see our expression. It's M. Remember, M is the messages sent in July minus 10. Okay, that would be our expression. Now, how many terms are in the expression? There are two terms because it's separated by a subtraction sign. And does the expression represent a sum difference product or quotient? It is a difference because difference is subtraction. All right, now we're going to go down to investigation three and we'll read this one here. So this one says a bottlenose dolphin can swim D miles per hour. So I'm going to circle that. That's how fast a dolphin can swim. Okay, and it says humans swim one third as fast as dolphins. That's important too. So we swim one third as fast as dolphins. Now it says write an algebraic expression that could be used to find out how fast hum humans can swim. Now remember when we're doing an expression, we start with what we don't know. And we don't know how fast dolphins can swim D. So just like in investigation one or two, I start with a bar and my variable. And remember, D is how fast dolphins can swim. Now here's what we do know. Humans swim one third as fast as dolphins. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the dolphin speed in two thirds. That means three parts. Now, it says write an expression that could be used to find out how fast humans can swim. Well, look at what I just did. I took the speed of dolphins, that bar, and didn't I split it into three groups? So that would get me the expression d divided by three. So humans can swim the speed of dolphins d divided by three miles per hour. Now in this one, how many terms are in the expression? This one's tricky because it is not separated by an addition or subtraction sign, so that is actually one term. And does this expression represent a sum, difference, product, or quotient? It actually represents a quotient because it's division. Now we're on to this page and we're going to do some of them together. This says work with a partner, write a real world problem and algebraic expression for each situation modeled. So let's do a couple of these together. In number one, it says year one, P people, year two, P people, and then 43 on the end. Now, let's start by writing the expression. This means that if you look at this bar here for year two, we somehow had P people plus 43 more people. So let's think of a situation for this one. Now I'm thinking year one people maybe, uh, let's start with this. In year one, um, P people. Um, I don't know, took a class. Now, for year two, we have to show something that shows that 43 people were added on. So I'm thinking like in year two, 43 more people took a class than in year one. I think that would show that you're adding on, right? Okay, so then we just need a question. How many people took a class in year two? Okay, so what I did is I showed, if I do some highlighting here so you can see, um, I showed that in year one, there was an unknown amount. P people took a class. They didn't have to take a class. They could have done, any, done anything else. Then in year two, I wanted to show that 43 was being added on. So in year two, 43 more people took a class than in year one. And then, like you should always do, I ended it up with a question. How many people took a class in year two? All right. So let's do another one together here. Let's go to... Let's do... How about three? Okay, so let's take a look at this situ situation. So there's someone named Dasan with B baseball caps. Now Dion, if you take B baseball caps, remember this represents that you're taking two caps away. This represents subtraction. So our expression would be B, I'm doing a cursive B, minus two, because we took two away. So, we need a sentence to show something about Dasan and B baseball caps. I could keep it simple. Maybe Dasan has B baseball caps. We don't know how many he has. By the way, who calls them caps? They're baseball hats. Dion must have two fewer because it, see how it's taking two away? So, maybe Dion has two less caps than Dasan. Okay. And then last, we need a question. And the question would be, how many caps does Dion have? Okay. So, breaking it down. Let me show you again here what I just did. 
So remember, the unknown amount is Dasan's B baseball cap. So my first sentence said he had B baseball caps. Then we know Dion must have two fewer because it's taking two away. So my second sentence says Dion has two less caps than Dasan. And then finally, I just ended up ended it with a question. How many caps does Dion have? All right. So remember, you could pause the video at any time if you need time to write things down. I'm going to do one more with you. I want to try to pick a good one. Uh, maybe one or two more. Um, how about... Let's do five. So, in five, take a look at our picture. It has Harry, M minutes, Janice, look at here, it's split into four pieces. So Janice must have one-fourth of whatever Harry has. So to show that Janice has one-fourth of that, we actually take the M minutes for Harry and we divide it into four pieces because that's what fourths is. Now we're going to write a sentence here. or exp uh, We're going to write a situation. So something about sentence one is going to have to do with this. Harry, uh, I don't know, maybe he spoke on a phone for M minutes. So let's start with that. Harry... Spoke on a phone for M minutes. Okay, now, when you look at the second part, remember, Janice must have spoken on a phone for one-fourth as long as Harry because she had his bar split into four pieces. So Janice spoke on a phone one-fourth as long as Harry. Okay. And then we just need a question. So, our question would be, how long did Janice speak on a phone? Okay. Now, let me just break it down one more time, show you the three sentences, because when you're doing three on your own, you're going to have to be able to do this. First, remember, unknown amount, Harry, M minutes. So we said Harry spoke on a phone for M minutes. Then we noticed that Janice had one-fourth of that. It was split into fourths. So we said Janice spoke on a phone one-fourth as long as Harry. Last, we wanted to know a question. How long did Janice speak on a phone? So that's basically what you have to do. If you can kind of think of three sentences for each one of these. In this one, bag of apples, pea pounds. Bag of oranges, well, that one reminds me of the one we just did with Janice and speaking on the phone. Um, if we look at the next one, remember three sentences. You should have a sentence about this, a sentence about this, and then a question. Okay, the one below it. Kent, that's a city by the way in England. Um, M square miles, Ames, it's another city, M square miles, but notice this, this 12 dropping away. Remember what that one means. That one's very similar to this one about the baseball caps. And then the last one, um, something in sixth grade was eight inches or H inches and something in seventh grade was H inches. And then the two more here, that is very similar to number one. So as you're doing these, remember, three sentences for each one. Don't forget to write your expression here and use the ones to the left as models to help you come up with these because these I'll be checking when you hand in your makeup work. All right, that's it for me. So I hope this helped. As always, thanks for watching.